In this video, I'm going to show you how to look at these geometric series from the perspective of number base. This will later help us understand E as an infinite series. So you might want to refresh your memory about number base in our computer course. The goal is to find out what is final number, the sum aggregates to. The math trick is easy. You multiply both sides by 1 over m, so each term sees the power increased by 1. Then subtract the two. Most of the terms vanish, except the first and the last. Now all we need is to clean up the expression for the sum. Multiply both sides by m, we get rid of some of the annoying fractions. Then rearranging, we have a formula for the sum. The nice thing with having a formula is, once we know m and n, we don't need to go through the painful summation. You just plug them in to get the result. Say we want to add 10 items of a series of 1 half. You could actually add them up term by term, or you could plug in m and n and get the answer. Now let's take a look at them from the perspective of number bases. We've said for base 2, each position represents twice the previous one, starting from 1. So now, if we were to represent the decimals, what should they be? If we reverse the direction, each position is half the previous one. So the first one is 1 half, a quarter, 1 eighth, and so on. If we have 0 0.61s in the binary format, then we know it's the summation of this series. If we have n terms, then it's Sn. One more example. For base 3, from left to right, each position represents 3 times the previous one. Going to the right, each one is a third of the previous one. Now, the same representation of point six ones in base 3 represents a sum of a different series. So all these series add up to some numbers. The formula we obtained is the fractional representation of the number. But they can also be represented in decimal ways in different number bases. Now, what if we never stop adding terms? So that means there are no ending terms. So in the decimal format, it means we will keep writing once. The decimal format is inexhaustible. We know that if you keep adding more and more terms, the number will be bigger and bigger. But how much bigger? Let's take base 10 as an example because we're familiar with this number. Eventually, numbers are used to represent real-life quantities. For example, it could represent the location of an object. We struggle with this never-ending way of number representation because we can't pinpoint exactly what it is, but we can have some rough ideas. If we round it to one decimal place, we know it's between 0.1 and 0.2. Take two decimal places, it's between 0.11 and 0.12, a much narrower range. Taking three decimals, it's between 0.111 and 0.112. So we can imagine, as we take more and more decimals, the range will become narrower and narrower. Eventually, it will converge to one point as the limit of this location. So although we are adding an infinite number of terms, although the result get bigger and bigger, it will become closer to one number. The next question is, is there a way to represent this limit clearly? What is the biggest decimal number that is smaller than 1? It should be point, an infinite number of 9s in base 10. This value should approach to 1. That means this series sum approaches 1. Hence, the original series approaches 1 over 9. So for all these decimal representation under different bases, if we max them out by using the largest symbol available for each position, 
in base 2 a bunch of 1s, base 3 a bunch of 2s, base 4 a bunch of 3s, and so on. Here are the series representation. All of them should get closer and closer to 1. So that means the limit of the first series should be 1. The second should be a half, a third, and so on. In general, 1 over m minus 1, where m is the base number. We can get the same limit by using the formula before, because you can see here this term vanishes as n goes to infinity. So the lesson is, fractional numbers don't always have nice decimal representation. For example, the representation for 1 ninth is inconvenient in base 10. But if we change the base, it will be different. Say we choose base 9, then the first decimal place will represent 1 ninth. Hence, point 0.1 in base 9 will represent 1 ninth. So it seems that numbers can be represented either in fractions or decimals. But are all the numbers representable? If you're interested, please proceed to the irrational numbers discussion.